In this video, we're talking about how the Steam Deck's killer app is almost here. And yes, I'm talking about Half-Life 3 for real. It actually looks like it's happening. Then we're going to talk about a new Steam Deck update that widens the scope of Steam OS even further. And finally, Proton has reached 10.0. There's a ton of fixes coming along with it. And I just want to talk about how cool Proton is to wrap up the video. But yeah, let's just jump into this first news story here because it's really interesting. So there have been rumors for like a decade at this point or more that Half-Life 3 is a thing. And they are based in reality because apparently Valve has started and stopped work on different versions of Half-Life 3 a bunch over the past however many years it's been since Half-Life 2 Episode 2 came out. They just never really got far enough on it where they felt like it was going to be a generational leap in gaming, so they kind of canceled it and they said, we'll wait until we have a really good idea that we can take over the finish line and then we'll release it. And because it's Half-Life 3, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because people will wait as long as they have to, as long as it eventually comes out. So over the weekend, this news really blew up because Tyler McVicker, who used to be known as Valve News Network, reported that Half-Life 3 is not only in development, but it's almost done and it's playable from end to end. Like it has fully reached the polishing stage and if they're not content locked, he'd be surprised. So like the whole game is locked. They just need to polish it and optimize it and get it ready for release. And it seems pretty damn cool and real. Now there are a lot of reasons I believe him. The first one being I've watched him for years and he's always been a reliable source, but also he leaked a ton of stuff with Deadlock before that was released in alpha. I haven't heard a lot about that game lately, so I wonder if it's still going strong. But yeah, he's like a trustworthy source and he's been reporting on this HLX or Half-Life X for a long time. And there was rumors that it was going to be a procedurally generated game, kind of like Left 4 Dead, like the levels themselves would be totally procedurally made. And then you would have kind of checkpoints in between that would show you scripted moments or scripted cutscenes. That was kind of overblown. What it really is, is it's using the AI director from Left 4 Dead and it's blowing it up and making it way smarter and more intricate where it'll move doors around or move hallways around, but it won't fundamentally change the actual layout of the map all that much. So it's not going to be this lame procedurally generated thing that a lot of people were expecting. And that's good. Now, one thing I've definitely criticized Valve for since the Steam Deck came out is how little support on the gaming side they really give the Steam Deck. I mean, if you go back in the back catalog with games like Portal, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episodes 1 and 2, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, like the older stuff, that all got updates to work and run well on the Steam Deck. And they've done boutique, spoke updates to actually take advantage of the Steam Deck's control layout and everything like that. But when you look at newer games that they actually support, like Dota 2, Counter-Strike 2, and Deadlock, I mean, the Steam Deck is not really the most viable platform for those games because they're heavily competitive, super high FPS shooters, or in the case of Dota 2, MOBAs, which I have no knowledge of MOBAs. I played League of Legends once back in college and I absolutely hated it, but I just can't imagine it would work all that well on the Steam Deck because no one has ever mentioned playing Dota on the Steam Deck. I just don't think it would translate all that well over to a controller setup versus a mouse and keyboard. But knowing that Half-Life 3 is a single player campaign based shooter in the style of something like Portal or Portal 2 or of course Half-Life 2 and not a high intensity FPS where you need a mouse and keyboard, this really should and could be the killer app for the Steam Deck. I know Elden Ring is the main game that's associated with the Steam Deck because they launched basically at the same time and it had a really rough launch on PC. Like it's still kind of a stuttery mess on PC, but Valve did a lot of extra work with Proton to do a quick hotfix update that made it effectively one of the best places, if not the smoothest place to play Elden Ring on any console or PC out there. Uh, they don't have a Valve game that really sells the Steam Deck. So this really could be the coming out moment, not just for the Steam Deck itself, but Steam OS and Steam Deck devices as a whole, because we know that Valve is working on extra hardware. I'll talk about that in the next video. We know they're working on a Deckard headset. We know they're working on the Fremont thing. We know they're working on a new Steam controller. All of this stuff should launch before or concurrently or very soon after Half-Life 3 because Half-Life 3 is going to be the biggest game ever. Like it's going to be good because it's Valve. They've taken forever to make it. They still make a quality product at the end of the day. Knowing that they use Source Engine, which did get a little bit harder to run with CS2, uh, I feel like the Steam Deck should be targeted as having at least a graphics preset ready to go 
at launch, and they should bake in support at launch for things like the capacitive touch sticks, gyro aiming, the back buttons, and everything like that. Like, if they could get this to have a Steam Deck graphics preset at launch and everything works well, and it can run up to 90 hertz at that preset without it being too low, that's going to be a huge driver for people wanting to buy the Steam Deck. There is also the possibility, though, that they could just make this their biggest launch ever and release it on consoles and PC at the same time. There is precedent of Valve games coming to Nintendo consoles because they did the companion collection for Portal just a couple of years ago that had a physical release, which is awesome, getting to play Portal and Portal 2 in one package on the Nintendo Switch. So if they are getting ready to finally give people Half-Life 3, I mean, I think you'd be kind of dumb to at least not get a console port of some sort into development. Maybe if it doesn't launch at the same time, it comes out a little bit later. Regardless, it should come to console like Left 4 Dead 2 did back in the day. But if it does launch on PC first and foremost, I feel like they'd be just shooting themselves in the foot to not at least prioritize Steam Deck at least a little bit. Obviously, people are skeptical of this. I got to be real. I am too, because, you know, like even if they are updating stuff on the back end, Valve has no problem canceling stuff that isn't working out. So even if the game is content complete, if they see one game come out that does a lot of stuff similar to Half-Life 3, I mean, they've done it a bunch of times in the past where they just cancel it and start over to try and do something genuinely new. And they're kind of fighting against time with this because as time goes on, the amount of innovation you can do with video games becomes harder and harder. And because of that, we see less and less of it. Also with how expensive game development is, how long it takes and with tariffs and everything like that, the amount of time it takes to actually be truly innovative is just rising as time goes on. So I feel like it's time for them to shit or get off the pot with this. They have it basically done, right? Like the game is complete. They just need to polish and optimize it. They just need to take it over the finish line and they've arguably never been in a better spot to do it. And even if it comes out before this other hardware, like the Fremont and everything like that, at least they have the Steam Deck just sitting right there. Like if you can advertise these two things in tandem, like you say, hey, Half-Life 3 is coming out on everything, but it's specifically optimized to work and run well on the Steam Deck. That's a really good driving factor to get people to want to pick up a Steam Deck. And I feel like even Valve, the crazy people that they are over there, wouldn't leave a marketing opportunity like that on the table. And I hope that's true because I want more people to be interested in playing the Steam Deck because as we all know, it's awesome from top to bottom. But yeah, the final rumor in this entire breakdown is that it's going to be announced this summer with a very quick turnaround, just like Half-Life Alex was. We know Summer Game Fest is coming up and Jeff Keighley has a very strong relationship with Valve because he's done those documentaries over the years where he does documentaries, he goes and films with them and it's about getting games over the finish line. He has a really close relationship with Valve and that would obviously be a huge get for him to have at Summer Game Fest. I mean, I feel like Half-Life is a big enough brand, especially with the mythos around Half-Life 3 and it's like long rumored release, like is it coming, is it not? I feel like you could potentially do its own showcase at that point and really show off how hard it's pushing the genre and the innovation in gaming, but they've got a friend in Jeff Keighley. He's got a Summer Game Fest show that would love to have Half-Life 3, obviously, so I just have a strong feeling that's probably where we'll see it if we are going to see it this year, and if we don't see it at Summer Game Fest, we'll probably see it at the Game Awards. But yeah, I believe it's real. I'm obviously skeptical. Until it's in my hands, I'm not believing it's going to come out because I've been led down this road before. Hopefully it jumpstarts them into making a Left 4 Dead 3 though, because that's my dream game. I, I want a Left 4 Dead 3. And if they're really working on building out the Left 4 Dead 3 AI God mode thing that runs all the levels and stuff, I would love to see that in a new Left 4 Dead, obviously. And maybe even a Portal 3, because a lot of the people involved with that franchise want to work on a new Portal as well. I mean, we could be in a new renaissance of Valve, which would be great. It'd be like a good swan song for Gabe, since he is getting older. But yeah, that brings me to the second news story here, which is we got a new Steam Deck update. This one's in the stable channel. So if you're not on the beta, you're going to get these updates. This finally brings over DualShock 3 full support. So the weird thing about the DualShock 3 is that to pair it with Bluetooth the right way, you actually have to connect it over USB and it'll sync up with whatever you're connecting it to, in this case being the Steam Deck with Steam input. And from that point forward, when you turn the controller on, it'll automatically search for that Bluetooth access point and connect it 
itself to that. They finally stopped the issue where that wasn't happening. So like if you plugged it in over USB, it would work just fine. But then if you ever disconnected it, uh, it would the Bluetooth wouldn't work. It wouldn't connect again. So they fixed that issue. This has been a long time coming. Uh, basically, I've been talking about it in betas for what feels like a couple of months now. Definitely going back into 2024. So I'm glad they ironed out this issue. It's great for emulation, obviously playing not only PS3 games, but PS2 and PS1 because the PS1, 2, and 3 all essentially use the exact same controller. They also fixed an issue where there were black frames at the beginning of the startup movie. So like the sound would start before the actual movie would play. That's cool. But the real thing here is that they added in touchpad support for the Legion Go S. This thing is right around the corner. I know they removed the release date a little bit, but that's obviously going to be a big milestone launch for Valve because the Legion Go S is shipping with Steam OS. And if everything works out right, we've been led to believe that this is going to be the full launch of Steam OS. Now, the interesting thing is when I got this PC, the first graphics card in it, the 5700 XT was not working. I don't want to get too far into it because it's going to be in a whole video. Uh, so I installed Steam OS instead of Bazite because Bazite was crashing a lot. Steam OS is pretty damn good in a desktop environment. There are weird issues like it doesn't boot from black screen. So if you let it kind of fade and go to black screen when it's in sleep mode, it does not come out of sleep mode. So you have to restart the PC, which is not great, but I was really impressed with how well it all scaled and also how well games ran on Steam OS versus just full on Bazite, which is made for desktop PCs. So even though it looks like they're not that far along and there are issues, like if you install Steam OS 3.8 on your Ally X, you're going to run into buttons issues and everything like that. It is pretty far along if you're just using a desktop PC with Steam input because I was using it with the DualSense Edge and it worked excellently. Supporting the trackpad for Legion Go S, I mean, that's probably one of the last things on their list. I'm really curious how this launch is going to go, mainly because the chip inside of it for the cheaper model is not great. Like the Z2 regular edition that shipped with the Legion Go S a few months ago is nothing to write home about. It's basically worse performance than the Steam Deck or at the same level. So at that point, why wouldn't you buy a Steam Deck? I know there is a Z1 Extreme version of the Legion Go S coming out and that could be interesting, but like, I still think the Steam Deck is the better buy. You're going to get quicker updates. You're going to get more support from Valve. You're just, you're just getting a product from the people making the software. So you're going to get that peace of mind that you're getting the best experience possible on that hardware. And obviously I'm partial to it because the channel's called Deck Ready, but even though I have a Legion Go, even though I have an Ally X with Bazite on it now, at the end of the day, I just love the Steam Deck and what SteamOS provides. I know the Bazite Hive is like adamant that you should just use Bazite instead of SteamOS, but like, I don't care. I like SteamOS because it comes from Valve on a Valve hardware device. It's just nice to have everything kind of unified in that way. And Bazite breaks for a lot of people, I've noticed. Like I was in the Discord asking for help and there are hundreds and hundreds of help topics from people for relatively minor shit, like your keyboard not working, your games crashing, black screens and everything like that. You don't really deal with that on SteamOS on the Steam Deck. It's like the nice middle ground between a full Linux PC and a console. And I think that's why I and a lot of other people like it. And that brings me to the final news story of this video, which is that Proton has officially hit version 10. It's nice that this is coinciding with the full release of SteamOS going to other handhelds. And they have brought along a lot of fixes with it. And there's a lot of games that people ask about in the comments. So I'm actually going to tell you what some of the fixes are. And then I'm just going to talk about how cool Proton is for a couple of minutes. So both Assassin's Creed Shadows and Grand Theft Auto V Enhanced Edition got updates to make them more smooth on the Steam Deck. Assassin's Creed Shadows is almost there. There are a few moments in that game where I've seen it drop under 30 FPS, but like with some cleanup on the Proton side of things or from Ubisoft, I feel like they could get it to a lock 30 FPS. And it's not like an Unreal Engine 5 game where you have to make it look like you're watching it from 15 feet away to actually get these playable frame rates. It is a pretty good looking uh, uh, preset that they've developed for the Steam Deck on it and GTA 5 Enhanced Edition. I know people are still bummed that you can't play GTA online, but like the story mode is good and I'm glad that still works. And the Enhanced Edition, despite adding in ray tracing, still runs and looks pretty dang good on the Steam Deck. So it's nice to see that get a fix. One of the biggest problem children with Proton for some reason is Batman Arkham Asylum. It's got 
to be because of its age at this point, like, and they're not going back and fixing it every time they do a remastered edition or anything like that. They've just left the PC version alone. So on some Proton updates, it would work fine. If you used Proton GE, it always worked fine. But now with Proton 10, they've specifically targeted Arkham Asylum Game of the Year Edition, which is one of my all-time favorite games. And it's so great on the Steam Deck, so I'm glad to know it will work in perpetuity going forward and random updates won't break it. Both Marvel Rivals and the Finals got updates to help them run better. I want to get into the Finals after playing Arc Raiders all weekend. That game is awesome. I really, really like Arc Raiders as someone who loves extraction shooters like Hunt Showdown. It pulls in all the best elements of that, but is distinctly different. So I feel like they're not like one or the other type games. I could play both. I'm not looking for a new first person shooter one, which is why I don't care about Marathon. It just doesn't look good to me. I'd rather stick with Hunt Showdown. Arc Raiders is one that I'm happy to throw in the mix and I'm glad it's not free to play. And yeah, those are all the big major fixes that are worth talking about, but Proton is just so cool. The whole idea of not needing a native Linux port to play PC games is great. And I was watching a video over the weekend. I forget who it was from, but like, you'll be able to find it. It was like the secret PC Valve never released. Basically the reason they made Steam OS in the first place was because Windows 8 sucked ass so much. Like there's that famous Gabe quote. So he was like, uh, Microsoft could pull support for our store at any point because Microsoft's whole idea with Windows 8 was to have a dedicated app store and not let people install their own apps, which would obviously be a bad thing for Steam because they'd have to follow a bunch of rules to get their Steam app on that app store. And because it's a storefront, they'd probably run into issues. So Valve created SteamOS 2.0 and the Steam machines and everything like that to try and fight that. And that's what kind of got us to the point we're at now with Proton, which is excellent. I mean, I've been playing games on a five-year-old graphics card all weekend. New games like Diablo 4, Elden Ring, Lies of P, a Tokyo Extreme Racer, of course, I have to test a racing game. And just so nice, not only getting great performance with no bloat or bullshit and the computer just runs so damn fast, but also being able to have the like frame limiter and everything like that, it really does make the PC feel like the true console replacement that I've always seen it as and I feel like once SteamOS is out and people can install it on whatever they want it is going to be a genuinely cool feature so I'm glad Valve made Proton I'm glad they're still updating it all the time and I'm just excited to see where it goes at this point because it still feels like we're in the baby stages of Proton even though it's 10 versions in and it's been around forever mainly because of the Steam Deck and its popularity it feels like we're only at the beginning but anyway guys that's all I've got for you in today's video as always my name is Jimmy Champagne I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching and shape on